today's topic of discussion is lung capacity after completing lung volume i will discuss lung capacity because lung capacity is combination of lung volumes combination of lung volumes now there are four lung capacities first is irc inspiratory reserve capacity second is vital capacity or vc third one is frc functional residual capacity and fourth is total lung capacity or tlc these are four capacities of lungs first is irc second is vc third is frc and fourth one is total lung capacity so now what is irc <clears throat> irc as it is inspiratory reserve capacity so volume of air volume of air that can be inspired that can be inspired after normal expiration after normal expiration this is i r c and formula of irc is tidal volume pv plus irv so this is the combination of tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume and you can calculate it easily tidal volume is 500 ml and irv is 3300 ml so respiratory reserve capacity is 3800 ml irc is 3800 ml after combining 500 ml and 30 3300 ml so this is about respiratory reserve capacity now next is vital capacity vital capacity vital capacity is very important to assess functional capacity of lungs so vital capacity or vc it is volume of air that can be expired after deep inspiration volume of air that can be expired after deep inspiration so this is applicable in case of deep inspiration and this is the combination of inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume and as we know irv is 3300 ml 
tidal volume is 500 ml plus ERV is 1000 ml. So after adding these volumes, we can get vital capacity that is 4800 ml. So this is vital capacity of lungs and it is very important capacity which represents functional status of lungs and it has some physiological variation also. In athletes, vital capacity is slightly more. In female, vital capacity is less and vital capacity is more when person is in standing position. So it has some physiological variation also. Now next is functional residual capacity. Functional residual capacity. FRC. FRC. So this is the volume of air which remains in lungs after normal expiration. So volume of air remaining in lungs after normal expiration. And this is combination of two volumes. First is ERV and second is RV, residual volume. And expiratory reserve volume is 1000 ml and residual volume is 1200 ml as we discussed earlier. So we can get by combining this 2200 ml. So 2200 ml is by functional residual capacity of lungs. Now, next is total lung capacity. Since lungs cannot be emptied and you can compare it as bubble in water. That's why there is concept of residual volume and functional residual capacity. Now, total lung capacity. Total lung capacity. This is also very important for functional status or to determine functional status of lungs. This is combination of all lung volumes. Combination of all lung volumes. It means respiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. This is 3300 ml. Tidal volume is 500 ml. Expiratory reserve volume is 100 ml. Plus residual is 1200 ml. And after adding, it becomes 6000 ml. And 6000 ml is total lung capacity. This is about the lung capacities. Now the next topic is dead space. Dead space. Dead space means the space of respiratory tract where gaseous exchange does not take place. It is physiological. Sometimes it may pathological. So, ready space 
is the site of respiratory tract where gaseous exchange does not take place. And interesting point is that it is physiological. It is normal. It is physiological. And now volume of dead space is 150 ml. This is the volume. 150 ml. Now, which parts are involved in dead space? Parts involved. Parts involved. As we discussed earlier that all structures are not related with gaseous exchange in respiratory tract. Some structure makes only respiratory passage or serve as a respiratory passage. And these, these parts are actually ready space like nose, pharynx, trachea, bronchi, all type of bronchi, secondary and tertiary and terminal bronchioles. These <coughs> structure serve as passage of air or movement of air. So these are the structures which makes dead space and it is uh, physiological. But in some cases, in pathological cases, sometimes some alveoli does not receive adequate blood supply. Some alveoli does not take part in exchange of gases. So they can be added in dead space. But in pathological condition, in diseased condition. So on the basis of pathological and physiological condition, dead space is divided into two. First is anatomical dead space. And second is physiological dead space. <clears throat> Structures which are related with passage for air movement constitutes anatomical dead space. So in normal condition, normal condition, Anatomical dead space is equal to physiological dead space. But in pathological condition, anatomical dead space is not equal to physiological dead space. Two additional volumes are added. That is the volume of those alveoli which cannot receive adequate blood supply or volume of those alveoli which cannot take place where gases exchange, exchange cannot take place. So you can decide whether the condition is physiological or pathological by understanding dead space.